Welcome to the webinar, SSIS Tips to Improve Performance. Um, just for me to start out here, a little bit about myself. My name is Tyrone Brown. I am a senior BI developer here at Pragmatic Works. I've been working with SQL Server in various capacities, I would say for about the past 15 years or so. Um, I have experience with the entire Microsoft Business Intelligence stack. That includes SQL Server reporting services, SQL Server integration services, SQL Server analysis services. I would say my primary focus recently has been with the integration services portion of the BI stack. Um, over the years, I've worked in various industries. Um, it's probably easier to name the ones I haven't than the ones that I have. Uh, I worked in finance. I've worked in healthcare, aviation, and manufacturing, just to name a few. I am also a Microsoft certified SQL Server developer and administrator for SQL Server 2005 and SQL Server 2008. I am currently working on my certification for SQL Server 2012. I graduated with a degree in math and computer science from Bloomsburg University. Of Pennsylvania. That is, for those who are, are unaware with that school, it is located in northeastern Pennsylvania. I would say it's between, somewhere between Scranton and Altoona. Um, once again, if you're not familiar with the area, you probably never heard of either of those places. Let's just say it's between Philadelphia and New York, New York City, close enough. Um, so about me, but personally, I currently reside in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm a consultant here with Pragmatic Works, so I spend some time there in Philadelphia a lot of times uh, with clients. I'm currently now in Oklahoma City working with a client, Chesapeake Energy, the uh, largest energy provider here in Oklahoma. Um, I'm married, no children, but I do have three cats. Uh, as for my hobbies, I like to play the guitar. Um, I like bowling. I have, do have seven perfect games. I like to travel a lot. I've been to Europe a lot. My wife is a French teacher, so we go to France on occasion. And I'm also a sort of a runner <laughs> with something I just started um, to get in shape. I just ran my first 5K, and hopefully I'll be running a half marathon next year. Okay, so to go over the agenda here, um, I broke this down into four lessons. Uh, the first lesson, I just wanted to go over some best practices. Um, I'm going to go over some common mistakes that people make. Uh, there are a few things, and my, I myself have made these mistakes throughout my career, um, that you may not think degrade performance, but they actually have a huge impact on performance. Then I want to go to the blocking, non-blocking, and semi-blocking transformations. I have an explanation and some examples. Um, I'll get into more details in that. And then I'm going to go show a third-party transform. As most of you may know, SQL, SQL Server Integration Services comes with a predefined set of tools. There are also some third-party tools out there that you can download and install that enhance the current tasks that they have there. So I will be demonstrating one from Task Factory, which is tool disclosure from our company, Pragmatic Works. Um, there are plenty of other third-party uh, components out there you can use. And I, I'm also going to discuss data types and the buffer. So I can show how that also um, affects performance. If you have incorrect data types or maybe your data types are too wide, I can show that and I'm going to give examples for that. So let me go here. Okay, so the first thing I want to start with is I think the most common mistake that people make when doing integration services packages. It involves the data source. The data source, I'm going to open here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to load a do a simple transform here. I'm going to take data from this table, complete sales data, extra columns, 
and I'm going to put them into the stable product names. Now I'm going to show you what's in these tables here. Okay, the first table, complete sales data extra columns. I'm going to show you what this is and why it's actually called complete sales data extra columns. Quick query here. Okay, so here I'm using sample data and this table, it's just uh, junk data. It doesn't really have much significance, but adequate for the demo here. It is something you would see in any company you work for that has sales data. So you have your sales ID, your product ID, the product name, uh, the price along with the customer ID, and then some customer information here, first name, middle initial, last name, and then a quantity. Um, the reason why this is called extra columns, what I did for the purpose of the demo is I replicated the columns. So you know the sales ID all the way here through quantity. And then I have some more here, sales ID to quantity underscore one, and so on down to five. So what I did, I just wanted to show how, how this will work with a wide table. In production, obviously this is not something that you would do practically, but for the purpose of this demo, it works great. So what I'm going to do is I want to load a table called product names. So what I want to do is, let me show you product names too. I just want to take the product information from this table, product ID and name, and then dump it into the table here called product names. Um, in, in a production environment, usually if you were to do a data load like this, you wouldn't use all the data from the source table. So in this case, that is actually practical. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the data access mode table or view and just grab the table here 